Hello, my name is Matt Max. welcome back. In the last episode, I showed you how to do addition with a really simple circuit, and today we want to do subtraction. Now, the cool thing about subtraction is that subtraction can be expressed with addition. So, 8 minus 5 equals 8 plus minus 5, right? That is the same. And the same is true for binary, okay? A minus B is the same as A plus minus B. Okay, that works in binary too. So the question is, how do we convert a binary number into a negative binary number? That's the question we have to answer, right? Because if you do that, we turn A plus B to A minus B. We only have to turn a binary number into a negative number now. I kind of messed this up when I explained binary. I said that to get a binary number, you just invert the number. So if you have a number like 0, 011, let's say this is B, I said that minus B would be the inverted one, so 1100. Keep in mind, this first number right here says that it's a negative, this first bit right here says that it's a negative binary number. But that's actually wrong. Minus B is this plus 1. So it's 1101. That would be minus B. So in this case, that would be minus 3. Alright, so this is how you actually turn a binary number into a negative binary number. And that means that we now can actually subtract two binary numbers with what is called an adder. Now, we already had an adder, I showed it to you in the last episode. An adder adds two binary numbers, and the symbol is like this. And then we have the carry in, we have the carry out, and we have the result, and we have A and B. Now, what actually is carry in and carry out? Well, let's say you add 1 plus 1, then the result is 2, right? 1 plus 1 equals 2. But this is only one bit, so this would be the carry out. On the other hand, the carry in is the carry out from the adder before that. So you chain them together. You would have one bit like this, and then you would have your next bit right here, and the carry in would be linked to the carry out. You chain them together like this. Anyway, so how would this look? when we want subtraction instead of addition, well, A, A is that simple, we just connect A, and then we want to subtract B from A, and to subtract B from A, we have to add the negative B, so we have to turn B into negative, so what we do, we just turn B through an inverter, and put this into the adder, but we still have to add plus one, okay? We already inverted it, that's what the inverter does, but we still have to add plus one. But there's a really simple and easy way to add plus one, and that is through this carry in. The first carry in of all your adders, you just connect to plus five volt, which is high, which is one, and that means, that means basically plus one, okay? So this is the first bit, so if you have an eight bit number, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, this plus five volt, right? Would affect this bit right here and it would turn this into a one so it's nothing else than adding one by connecting plus five volt to the carry and also first bit you add plus one okay and then you just go ahead and you chain it together like this and i can actually show you how it looks so this is how it looks and i realize it looks more complicated but the majority of what you see here is just infrastructure basically for the IC. This thing right here is a 4 bit adder chip, okay? And all of those are just pull down resistors. Those are pull down resistors, those are just resistors for this LED and so on. So, this chip right here is an inverter. What do you actually see here? Well, it's really simple. We have B, those are the yellow cables, okay? B is going through those resistors into the inverter, okay? And then the green lines are going from the inverter into the B inputs of this adder. 
At the same time, we have our A inputs, which are the white cables. The white cables go through those resistors and then into the A inputs of the adder. Okay? So that is basically a 4-bit adder, but we have one, uh, we have five volt connected to the carrion, that is this pin right here and this red cable. And we send the B signal, the yellow cables, through an inverter first. So let's see how it behaves, shall we? All right, here we go. Turn it on. Now let's say, let's first see that it really works. So let's say, this is the output, okay? If I input one, I get output of one. If I input two, I get an output of two. If I input four, I get an output of four and so on. So this actually works. Now, let's say A is one. And let's say B is one. So now B is one. A is one. A is the lowest four digits. Two, three, four. That's A. And the upper four digits is B. So, sorry. One minus one equals zero. Yep, that's correct. 1 minus 2 equals minus 1. That's correct. One minus uh, minus four equals minus three. That's correct too. One minus eight oops minus eight is minus seven. That's also correct. All right. So let's say we have nine here. A is now nine. Nine minus one is eight. Yeah, that's correct. A, a nine minus two is seven. So that's four plus two plus one, that's seven. So you see that this is actually working. This is binary subtraction and it uses the exact same things that I used to do binary addition and it is exactly you see right here, it's just B sent through an inverter into the input, and the carry in of the first bit is the plus five volt. That's binary subtraction. That's how simple it is. So, the next question we should ask ourselves is now that we can add and we can subtract, is there actually a way for us to choose which function we want? To choose if we want to add or subtract? And yeah, there indeed is. And the easiest way to do this is called a multiplexer. Now a multiplexer is, it looks like this if you would, if you would uh, write it down. And there are different multiplexers. Now this multiplexer has three inputs and one output. And then you have another input and this input chooses which of those three cases is true and which of those three cases is let through. And Basically, this is only there's only a couple logic gates, but we can make this with only AND gates, so let's do it. All right, I'm unfortunately out of white pieces of paper, so I have to use one of those. Now, let's see whether or not we can actually choose whether or not we want to add or subtract by building multiplexes. So let's make the easy circuit first by using this multiplexer symbol, and then let's actually build the actual circuit. So the easy circuit, would be somehow like this. So we would have our adder, right? And then we would have A connected to it. That's a no-brainer. And then we would have B. And we would have to choose whether or not we would want to send B in directly, then it would be an addition, or through a not gate through an inverter, right? So if this multiplexer is set to one, then not B is sent in, the inverted B is sent in. If this multiplexer is sent to zero, then B is sent in directly, okay? But we also have to choose whether or not we actually want to put in our carry-in signal because that's our plus one. So we need a multiplexer two here, Basically, we have ground one time and we have plus five volts. So if we would set both of those multiplexers to one, what would happen is we would get the inverted signal of B and we would get plus five volts to the carry-in, which is exactly what we have right here. So if we would set both of those multiplexers to one, we would have subtraction. 
if we would set both of those multiplexes to zero, we would get B directly and we would have zero volt at, at the input, which means we would have an addition. So zero would be addition and one would be subtraction. We just build a circuit where we can choose whether or not we want to add or subtract stuff from each other. That's kind of cool in my opinion. Now, those multiplexes only have two cases and that's the simplest multiplexer available because it's basically just, it's basically just an AND gate. All right, that's the simplest multiplexer available. Now, basically, I only focus on this right now, okay? So this would look like the following. We would have B input and then we would have two AND gates. And then we would have two control lines. And depending on which control line we put a one, a different signal gets through. So this would be the inverted signal. And this would be the uninverted signal. So this right here, if this is one, then we have the inverted signal. If this is one, then we have our usual signal. So in this case, we would need two control lines, but we can actually make it more easy because those control lines are never the same. Right, they cannot be the same. If they both would be one, then both the inverted and the not inverted signal would go through and that wouldn't work, we would get an error. So since those two signals will always be completely different from each other, we can just put, put another not gate in here. And now we have only one control line. Now, if this control line is zero, right, if this control line is zero, then this right here will be one, and we will get the normal signal. If this control line is one, then this will be zero, so this will not go through, and this will be one, so this will go through. So, if you have the complete circuit with B and with the multiplexer in our carry in, so let me draw this again. This complete circuit. This complete circuit would look something like this. We would have our ad adder. And then we would have our carry in and we would have B here. I just ignore all the rest because it doesn't really matter. And then we would have our B circuit, which is basically we have a switch or something here. Plus five volt. We have our B circuit and we have our two end gates. So, which right here? And one over right here. That we already talked about, right? That is our first multiplexer, which we can choose whether or not we actually want B or not B to put in. And whenever not B is put in, we have to put in five volt here. So that means we have plus five volts. Basically through an end gate. It's a pull down resistor. And then we would just connect this to this end gate. All right, so let's make, let's make an actual truth table and let's call this C and let's see all of our, and let's call this A, and let's make a truth table. So we have A and B and C and carry in. All right, and let's just pretend that B is always one, right? It doesn't really matter because let's say we trigger this one, uh, actually we trigger this one. If B is one, then it, the output is one. If B is zero, then the output is zero. So whenever this is triggered, the output is exactly what the input is. So we just set B to one for all cases. So if A is zero, if A is zero, 
This over here is false. So carry in is zero. Okay, at the same time, C is exactly B, right? Because if this is zero, this is one. So this is triggered. So that would be one. That would be an addition. If A is one, then this would be zero, but this would be triggered. And this is an inversion, right? So C would be zero. So Z inverted from B and C I would be one, two. That's just a subtraction. So with this really simple circuit, we can choose whether or not we want to add or we want to subtract. So let's actually build it. <laughs> 